you are probably not using this amazing feature P6, stored period performance. You're probably not using it, right? Okay, in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you should be using it and what it's gonna do for you. Now, listen, I'm about to launch my new advanced P6 progressing course. Should be out really soon uh, at the end of February this year. And in that course, I go deep on this topic, but here I'm just gonna give you some important key points for you to take away. Stored period performance, what is it? What does it do for us? This has to do with how we capture actuals in P6. We have a problem with how actuals are captured in P6, especially on longer activities. Now, let me give you some visuals on this, okay? So let's say I am installing fence and I wanna install 25 sections of fence. So every week I'm going to install some portion of that. In the first week, let's say I do three sections. In the next week, let's say I do five sections. Well, if I look at my actuals in P6, P6 will take the total of three and five equals eight and spread it out equally over the duration of that activity. Watch what happens in week three. In week three, I did an eight sections because I ramped up my productivity. What's P6 gonna show me? It's not gonna show me that I did three and then five and then eight. It's just gonna say you did 5.3 sections per week and on and on and on. And so by the end of it, I did 25 sections, but it's just gonna say I did 4.16 sections per week. P6 will not capture the individual weekly updates like that, unless you're using something called stored period performance or financial periods is the other language for it. So what happens with financial periods? If I wanna look at my graph of productivity, here's what I'm gonna see, a straight line. I don't see my increase in productivity or my decrease in productivity. So I can't garner that information. What we wanna do or what stored period performance does is it's essentially it takes the actual for the week or for the month, depending on how we want to configure it, and it locks it in, storing it in separate buckets. Let's, let's call that. So that I can actually produce this kind of graph. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. I'm gonna talk about different versions of P6. So let's flip over to P6. Until recently, as of version 20.12, stored period performance had, an, had a problem in P6. Like this feature has always been there, but nobody used it and there was a reason. It's because these periods that we, we set, we set the buckets that we want to capture. In this example, we just saw, we set weekly buckets. But some projects might want weekly buckets, other projects want monthly buckets, other projects have also monthly, but they start on Monday instead of Sunday. So there's all sorts of configuration. And in older versions of P6 before version 20.12, the buckets were global for all projects, meaning I didn't have the ability to configure different kinds of buckets for all sorts of different situations. I just had one set of buckets. That was a problem. But in version 20.12, something new came out. And it's what we call a new type of calendar, which is called a financial period calendar. Where do I find those? Well, you can find them on the admin menu right here, financial period calendars. In the older versions of P6, it'll just say financial periods here. And basically they've created kind of a new type of calendar that allows me to create all these different types of buckets. And then I can apply those to my projects. So here, I've built some weekly buckets, and here's what that looks like. So um, 2027 every week, and here are my start and end dates. The, these are my buckets, okay? I can also create monthly buckets. For example, monthly buckets look like this, and again, the, the month, the start and the end date of the buckets, just the, the start and the end of the month, okay? Then what happens, once I create my buckets, my calendar, my financial period calendar, I now can assign it to the project. So here's my project, and I go to the general tab, and down here, there's a new field called financial period calendar. This has changed the roadmap for us, because now 
we have the flexibility to use financial period calendars on any project because we can create as many calendars as we want. We're not going to interfere with other people's calendars. And so what I can do is I can do a project like the one I, I showed you in my slides where I install 25 uh, fence units over 30 days. So here we go. I budgeted 25 fence units. My actual say 25. Check this out. If I go and see my productivity, here's what P6 would have shown me, 4.17 every week. Or I can actually now capture the individual weekly updates here using this field, the period actual. Okay, so they're captured. Not only that, back in the activity screen now, I can do a resource usage profile and I can graph that same productivity chart here. So no longer do I have to see just the flat lines of my actual spread over the duration. I can actually have the buckets and have my progress shown that way. This is a game changer. So if you want to learn more about this, I've got a big module on how to use this in my new advanced P6 progressing course. Maybe you should check it out. Hope it's for you. I will see you again soon in another tutorial. See you soon. Take a look.